think it's all. <laughs> it's a lot, huh? I don't like it, <laughs> What's up, everyone? Jeremy here, and we're going to answer some more questions for you guys. Uh, I think we've got a couple of uh, recent questions here. But um, feel free to, uh, to ask any questions in the comment section in this video. Uh, and we'll try to get back to you or we'll try to make a video of it within the next week of it being posted pretty busy around here forgive me all right go ahead all right question number one from Kayla hi majors Academy I have a question for a and J's q and a I'm wondering what training tools are best for scared and previously feral dogs I am fostering a dog who was a previous feral and is scared of nearly everything. He trusts me but is scared of strangers and tries to bolt if we see any people out on walks. Mm. He seems a lot like the German Shepherd, Lily, I saw on your page. My question is, what training tools do you use on these scared dogs with terrible, with feral type behavior? Would you use a prong collar or what type of collar is best for walks with scared dogs? Thank you. Good question. Um, so. Uh, I had a dog, Tobias, my personal dog. He was showed kind of that feral uh, behavior, just wanted to run from everything, thought the world was out to kill him, right? Put a prong collar on him, it was way too much too soon. So I had to go back to prong, uh, slip lead. So go for a slip lead until the dog really knows um, um, is a little bit more safe, feels a little bit more safe with you, and learns how to turn with you. Uh, so, for example, what I did with Tobias is put the slip lead on him and I walked in opposite directions whenever he pulled out in front of me. I turned around so that he got used to walking with me as opposed to walking me. And once you build that conversation, then you can go to prong collar and ask for a better heel. Because eventually you want to uh, be able to, to uh, have your dog heal with you. Um, with no tension on the leash, uh, you know, kind of free healing, and that is achieved best with prong collar. The slip lead is maybe that middle stage because, um, you know, it has no effect on some dogs will just pull, you know, despite um, the the slip lead. So, the prong collar, uh, I will post uh, the the how to prong collar down below uh, in the description box as well as how to uh, the how to walk um, just so you have those both of those will be in the description box uh, on our YouTube channel and so um, again you might want to start with a slip lead so that you don't lose your dog if you have a collar they could slip out flighty dogs just make sure you have a backup plan um, for dogs that are scared of the world so um, start with slip lead build a conversation that you or that the dog has to walk with you and then leave some time maybe a month or so and then try with a prong collar and get an even better heel but the time you're gonna have to just spend some good time so that you can eventually get what you want the picture that you want and then the dog will start to feel better about um, walking and whatnot okay did I address it up? did I get it everything yeah that's what you did with Lily too isn't it you started with Lily, the slip. Yeah. And then went to a prong collar? Yeah, I went to prong, yeah. And then her, her walk was amazing. Um, and uh, she didn't think the world actually was out to kill her after, after I had her for about two weeks. She, I could get her to sit, you know, amongst some crazy stuff. So, uh, Kayla, I hope that helps. If it doesn't, ask another question and we'll answer it again. All right? Peace. That's what you want. <laughs> That's a lot, huh? I don't like it, though, though. <laughs>